Good morning, guys. JD Fishing and Flipping here. Just wanted to touch base with you guys. I know I said I was going to do some tips and tricks. So there's just a few things I wanted to go over on the SS inline bait. I wanted to uh, help you guys out uh, to help you, you know, kind of get an idea of what I use. Um, you know, and everyone's different. Everyone has different ways of, of fishing. But I think there is a predominantly uh, a... A solid way of fishing especially for snakeheads uh, that really works uh, as a general all rule uh, so first we're gonna go over the use and purpose of the SS inline I know somebody mentioned it on the post that SS custom baits made the other day uh, that the SS inline is like a search bait like for bass like you have the lipless crankbait or a chatter bait it's kind of like a search bait well this is exactly that type of deal with the snakehead. What this does is you can throw this out in the middle of the canal or towards the bank across the other side and, and reel it and slow roll it. And this thing finds the fish. Like the fish come out for this thing. I mean, the way that they come out for it is just super aggressive, super powerful. And you'll notice when you start to use this thing in areas that have snakes, you're going to notice exactly what I'm talking about. So... Well, and I wanted to give you an example. So let's say that the canal is 10 feet deep, right? You throw the lure out towards the middle. You let it sink 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000 to 5, right? So it's 5 feet, so it's halfway down. And so now you have the area covered. When you're slow rolling that SSN line, you have all areas covered, covered whether the snakes are closer to the surface or they're down at the bottom, or they're on the sides, whatever way you have it covered. So that's a good way and the way that I predominantly fish that lure. You can uh, fish it subsurface depending on where the snakes happen to be at the time, but I know that a lot of the bigger fish, what I'm noticing, sit at the bottom, and this kind of brings them up. So definitely keep that in mind. And also this lure is super important in areas that are spooky. Some areas, are a lot more heavily pressured. Uh, you guys know being in uh, South Florida that the snakehead fishing is getting very popular. It's blowing up. A lot of people are doing it. These fish are having lures thrown at them all day, especially topwater frogs. It's almost, it's very hard to get uh, fish on topwater frogs in a lot of these areas now because so many people are using topwater. So going subsurface allows a lot more opportunity for them to see something different and they're able to respond to that a lot better, I think. So that's super important um, as well. Now we're gonna move on to uh, casting placement. I predominantly, like I said, cast my placement across the bank, maybe like two or three feet off of it, or in the middle of the canal and letting it sink and then slow rolling it. That's what I like to do. That's what I find, like, I find that they uh, hit the most and it also works the best. Um, I don't really like so much bank fishing uh, with it, I will, I will, if I do decide to cast it along the bank, it'll be probably like, at like, I don't know, like a, or like a 30 or 40 degree angle and bring it in that way. Or what I'll do is I'll cast it across the, uh, across the bank um, at an angle maybe like a 40 degree angle and bring it across that way. That's how I've seen that it's worked the most uh, success with. Uh, you have to understand how a snakehead hits. If you look at how a snakehead hits, okay, when they come up to a lure, uh, if, if they hit it aggressively, okay, like let's say that they're sitting on the side of the bank and you're bringing it exactly towards you, Okay? and they hit it completely sideways, like uh, horizontally, right? That hook is going to go somewhere in their eye or their cheek or the side of their mouth, most likely, okay? They're hit, that's the way it's going to hit. Uh, for me, I like to put it in a position where they're going to come behind the lure and swallow the whole thing and try to get a hook set maybe like in the in the top of the head. The one thing about the SS inline I like that I've noticed is, is it, it's extremely consistent in hooking, it, if you do it right, hooking in the top parts of the head. That's where you want to have it because they have a hard skull and once you hit, get that hook into their head, 
as long as you keep that line tight, usually you're going to get the fish in nine times out of ten. So um, that's huge. Uh, casting placement is huge. So, I mean, you can bank fish with it, but I predominantly like to go out in the middle or across the bank. Across the bank, I think, is really successful because they come behind it, like I said, and they attack it that way. They have a I feel like it has a better hookup ratio that way, and I think that's really any, um, if you're using like just like a soft paddle tail plastic with a single hook, I mean, really anything uh, works like that uh, better. So, that being said, um, We'll move on to number three, that's rod and reel type. Now, this is huge. Besides casting placement, I think that this is one of the other most big aspects that people, I think, don't realize will really improve their uh, their snakehead fishing game. Okay, so we're gonna do rod and reel type. The rod, I would say, for this specific lure, uh, I would say a medium heavy, to a regular heavy, just like a, a heavy rod. Um, but it's important to have a uh, a rod that has some bend to it though. You don't want a, a broomstick with this lure. It's not gonna work well. I have, I happen to have a medium heavy, but it's Witch Doctor, and Witch Doctor, if, if you know who they are, they make fantastic rods, and that rod sets the hook like a heavy rod, but it has the action and feel of a medium heavy, so it's a really unique rod. It's a, a Witch Doctor Voodoo 2, so um, I'm able to set that hook in that fish pretty well, but also have the bend of a medium heavy. Uh, and the action of a, of a medium heavy to try to keep that fish pinned. So if you do get a heavy rod, you want a little bit more bend in the tip for this this um, this setup. So keep that in mind. Another thing is the reel. Now I use a Daiwa Zillion Type HD. It's the 2016 version, uh, and I was actually blessed to be able to get that reel because it's a rare reel. Now they're really hard to find, uh, and that thing is a beast, man. I have, I think that thing's at 15 pounds of drag, so it's not like crazy, like 20 or anything like that, but it's it's pretty solid. Um, and that's what I wanna talk about too. If you're gonna, if, you, if you're choosing a reel, okay, you need to have a reel that has good drag. Um, I know Shimano is really good in terms of uh, smoothness, but most of their reels don't really have that good a drag. Um, I know that their drag rating is lower than what they, or I'm sorry, is actually higher than what they rate it. Uh, so, so they give it a really um, uh, um, non-conservative rating on their, on their drag. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, but Shimano's great. I mean, they, uh, don't get me wrong, they have some good stuff. Like, like the Shimano Cronarch is a pretty beast reel. Um, I know I use the uh, Shimano Curato uh, 200k for a while that really put up some really good stuff I mean I, I slayed so much so many fish with that reel but that reel did have uh, I just feel it didn't have enough drag a lot of the time I lost a lot of fish because I wasn't able to set the hook so I mean maybe that was me and I just wasn't um, good with that reel but you know everyone's different so but that reel has 15 pounds of drag and the reason why I say that's important because when you're casting you're for snakes, you want to cast really far. That's another thing. You have to cast far for these fish. Uh, uh, most of the time, they're going to spook if you're, if you're going to get too close. So when you're casting uh, for these fish, you'll probably notice that when you cast really long, it gets harder to set the hook in the fish because you're farther away and you have less power I, I don't know if that makes sense. You have less ability to be able to just set that hook, just straight stick that fish. Um, so you, you need as much power as you can get, but you also need castability. So that's why I think it's important to have a, a higher drag, so that way you're able to have uh, a better chance at sticking that fish really good from a far distance. That's another thing. My Daiwa Zillion, that thing is an insane caster. That thing casts so well. Uh, <clears throat> now I will say that it is on the on the higher end 
uh, of pricing. I know that everyone can afford that. So um, if, if you can, I mean, you can always go with a, a Daiwa Tatula SV. Uh, I used that for a long time, uh, like for like a year and a half. Um, and that was a really good reel and won me a lot of fish as well. Um, uh, the new Daiwa Tatula SV looks pretty good too. So um, it, that would be a good a reel and it's also light. So it has higher drag, it's lighter, and it's pretty tough. So that would be good. And that would work on a medium heavy um, rod too. So, uh, And I think that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, those things are just some things to take into consideration. Um, I know I had mentioned also the sensitivity of the Oracle pitching stick that I use. Now that's something specifically I chose just for uh, that SSN line that is a little bit bigger than the others. It's a special one. Um, it, it's an upsized uh, SSN line. And I put an Owner Beast uh, 6 aught weighted hook on there. That thing is a, it's a big hook. So I needed something that was going to just jam that hook in that fish's face but still be able to handle um, controlling a big fish. And the Oracle, uh, the Witch Doctor Oracle pitching stick is, it gets the job done and I'm able to feel the fish uh, bite the lure and I'm able to tell whether he has it in his mouth or not. That's how sensitive that rod is. So um, now obviously I'm dealing with a higher end rod. Um, you know, the Oracle pitching stick's like 400. And I think the Voodoo I have is like, I think it's like, 230 or 240 I don't know it might be more uh, but one rod I would recommend that I have personally used that I love that I think it's really great is a Dobbins Fury series if you can get your hands on one of those um, that's a really good starter rod or a really good rod that really is all around it's a really good all-around rod um, obviously depending on the size that you get I have a, um, a heavy a heavy, heavy action, or I'm sorry, heavy, uh, fast action Dobbins Fury Series rod, and that thing has won me a lot of fish too, so, um, and I was using a Shimano Kurito on that thing, and I slayed tons of fish on that, so, uh, I, I hope that helps, guys, uh, if you have any questions or whatever, message me or, or SS Custom Baits, um, I hope you guys stay tight out there, and, uh, God bless. See you guys soon.